In 2024, in Philadelphia, the city had become nothing but abandoned buildings and fire on the streets. Not a single survivor can be seen around. In 1988, also in Philadelphia, a mysterious hooded person walks through the city. Meanwhile, a pianist, a cook, and a bus driver are going through their usual nights when suddenly, they begin bleeding from all of their orifices before they all die at the same time. The bus crashes and a book falls, revealing the driver had been reading American Patriot. Police officer Thomas is starting a shift soon, but before leaving home, he cooks a quick breakfast for his pregnant wife Jean. After meeting with his partner Maddox, they go to see the bus crash, where Thomas's brother-in-law and head detective Holt is already working. When they look at the body, they find pieces of the driver's brain on the ground and three weird puncture wounds on her neck. Afterward, they check on the pianist and the cook, finding exactly the same situation, brain chunks and three puncture wounds. Later, Thomas and Maddox go to see the doctor in charge of the autopsy, who explains the wounds were injection sites deep enough to impact the vertebrate. However, nobody in the lab can identify the poisonous substance used in the injection. Then, they go out to grab a bite, and Thomas takes the chance to buy a bracelet for Jean. Their dinner is interrupted by a call from a cop that has found another person with those three puncture wounds, but this one is still alive. The pair rushes to the club, where Holt is coming for interrogation too, and they learn that this girl had been attacked by a black woman with a blue hoodie and a bloody hand. Before she can offer more information though, she dies the same way all the others did. The police force begins interrogating every black woman they can find, and thanks to a few witnesses, they get an identikit. Soon they find an area where the murderer was last seen, and Thomas and Maddox end up coming across her by mere chance. Her name is Raya, and she runs to hide in the subway station, so the cops follow her there. Missing when the radio in the car announces Jean is going into labor, Thomas finds an empty futuristic weapon on the ground that looks like the thing Raya used for the injections, but Maddox is the one that finds her first. Raya easily fights him off and breaks his leg before running off, but the noise they made is enough for Thomas to find them. He aims his gun at her, only to freeze when she begins speaking mysterious words. Raya knows his name and says, this is where it happens. She also congratulates him on his new daughter and apologizes for Maddox, claiming she didn't mean to. Thomas doesn't want to hear it and tries to arrest her, but Raya fights him off and handcuffs him to a bench. Remembering he still has her weapon, Thomas hits her with it, and Raya falls back, dying while the train passes by. Taking the case as closed, Thomas leaves the station and another officer tells him about his wife. Thomas rushes to the hospital, where he's approached by another cop that tells him Raya had no ID or fingerprint matches. She was a nobody. The only thing on her were some weird keys. The officer also asked Thomas for his revolver, because Raya had a bullet from a service gun in her hand, which is strange because none of the cops at the scene of the crime fired their weapons. Then, Thomas is found by a nurse that tells him Jean is having trouble giving birth and is hemorrhaging. Thomas rushes to her side and puts the bracelet on her wrist, but his presence isn't enough. Moments later, the doctors bring Thomas and Holt the news. The baby is safe, but Jean unfortunately died. Nine years later, in 1997, Thomas, who is now a detective, has taken the day off to spend with his daughter Amy on her birthday. Amy has been wearing her mother's bracelet since she was a baby, and every year Thomas gives her a new charm for it. Their first stop is at the cemetery to leave some flowers on Jean's grave, and Thomas is shocked to see someone had already been there and left flowers as well. Next, they should be going to the zoo, but Thomas gets an emergency call, and since it's so important, he leaves Amy with another cop for a moment while taking a look at the latest crime. Maddox is there too, walking with a limp now, and swearing he wasn't the one to leave flowers for Jean earlier. The reason why Thomas was called is that another body with three wound punctures has shown up, and since today is the anniversary, it can't be a coincidence. This time, the victim is a professor of politics, and the weird poison has been used again, which is strange because not even the police labs could figure out what it was. Holt, who is now lieutenant, shows up as well, and after telling Thomas he didn't leave flowers for Jean either, they check the security cameras and find a person wearing the same hoodie as Raya. The officer decides to blame it on a copycat, but Thomas isn't sure and drags Amy with him back to the station to reopen the old case. They never looked at the clues closely because with Raya dead, the case was closed, but now it's time to put the puzzle pieces together. Thomas sends the keys they had found to be analyzed while he learns two more bodies with the same wounds have been found, and he decides to stay at the station and work on the case, so Amy's birthday outing is cancelled. They can't find any connection among all the victims, but Thomas begins to worry when he realizes the copycat has an injured hand like Raya, yet they never made that detail public. The test results came in, showing that the keys belong to an aircraft common in small airfields manufactured in 1996, which makes no sense because they found the keys in 1988. Only one airfield in the area has that kind of plane, so Thomas leaves Amy with an officer to go check it out. 
On his way out though, he bumps into Dr. Rao, who points out that the case had some coincidences with his studies. The murders match a specific lunar purgy, known as a blood moon, which is theorized to open a bridge into time travel, but Thomas and Maddox don't take him seriously. When they make it to the airfield, they find it closed, but Thomas can see a light in the building and decide to sneak in anyway. The clerk denies having seen anybody tonight, but Thomas can tell he's behaving awkwardly and nervously. Thus he tries to communicate with him through notes because he suspects he's being held hostage. His guess is correct, but before he can do anything about it, Raya shows up next to him, alive and not having aged a day. While pointing her gun at him, she makes Thomas drop the weapon, then order the clerk to tie him up. With the clerk between him and Raya as cover, Thomas takes the chance to take out his phone and call Maddox so he can hear what's going on before he's tied up to the chair. Next, Raya asks for plane keys, and when the clerk goes to grab them, he takes out his own weapon to defend himself, except Raya is quick to act and knocks him out to grab the weapon for herself. Suddenly, she's startled by Maddox showing up behind her and she accidentally shoots him, killing him without meaning to, which explains the apology she gave to Thomas nine years ago. A backup party led by Holt is already arriving at the airfield, so Raya drags Thomas away with her in a plane. Thomas passes out and dreams of Jean before Raya wakes up to tell him to stop chasing her because she's doing all this to save people's lives. The reason why she's alive is that every nine years when the moon sets, she can come back but not for long. She doesn't want to explain more because Thomas needs to stop and go back home to his daughter, but since he refuses, Raya pushes him out of the plane and into the water. Thomas swims to shore and finds the crashed plane, yet no Raya in sight. In the morning, after Holt scolds him for being reckless, Thomas tells him they won't find Raya's body because she's most likely a time traveler from the future. Nine years later, in 2006, Thomas is digging out the grave of a man called Harold Nowak, whose death had been dismissed as an addiction, but Thomas now finds the three wound punctures on his skeleton. He has become so obsessed with the case that he left the force and became a private investigator to figure out the mystery behind Raya. He lives in his car and has a radio hooked to the police force's frequency in order to keep an ear out for any clues. Thomas has also began reading about the moon and its energies while looking for Dr. Rao, but he's completely disappeared. After checking Nowak's name on a list, Thomas visits the widow, who tells him Nowak used to run a white nationalist militant group. Noax's ex, Heather, used to work with him, so Thomas writes her name down before asking for a list of the members of this group. This list is the connection he's been missing because on it, he finds the names of many of Raya's victims. Afterward, Thomas goes to pick Amy up at school. Nowadays, she lives with Holt and his wife and she doesn't see her father much. In fact, she disapproves of his lifestyle. Still, she tries to tell her about any news in her life, including mentions of a boyfriend that Thomas doesn't remember even if he's met before. Then, Thomas drops Amy at her home, but not without giving her a birthday present, which is another charm. Unfortunately, Amy stopped wearing the bracelet ages ago, and Thomas didn't even notice. Next, Thomas visits Jean's grave before getting together with Holt at a cafe to show him the new clues he's found. Thomas thinks Raya is killing all members of this group with an advanced poison from the future that can be activated remotely, and she's moving backwards in time while the rest of the world moves forward which explains why Thomas saw her die and then reappear just fine, and why she had that information about him. Thomas just wants Holt to help him get to Heather's address, but Holt thinks he's crazy and dismisses the time-traveling theory. Not willing to give up yet, Thomas pretends to cry and accepts he's in a bad mental health state, apologizing for his actions. Holt hugs him and promises to help him find a therapist, and Thomas takes a chance to steal his badge. Once Holt is gone, Thomas pretends to be him and calls the station to ask for Heather's information from the system. Unfortunately, by the time Thomas makes it to Heather's place, she's already dead, and she's got the same bleeding and three wound punctures. Suddenly, Raya jumps out of the house, and Thomas tries to shoot her, wounding her hand with one of his bullets as it was previously found on her dead body. Raya escapes on a bike, so Thomas steals a truck and follows her to the same beach where she had crashed the plane. By entering a sewer pipe, Thomas finds the place where Raya hides her time machine, but before he can do anything, she activates it and gets away. When Thomas leaves the sewer, Holt and his men are waiting for him to arrest him, not believing his crazy story about a time traveler. From afar, Rao watches this whole scene happen. Nine years later, in 2015, Rao has finally finished working on the poison that would later be used by Raya by testing it on pigs. Thomas had been right. It's activated remotely from a computer, which explains why all the victims die at the same time. His lab is near the same shore with the sewer pipe, and the security cameras show him that today, Thomas is making camp at the beach because he knows it's the anniversary and Raya should be coming. While waiting, Thomas gets a call from Amy, telling him that even if they barely see each other nowadays, she'd like him to be there when she has her baby. He barely has time to think about what to do when suddenly, his face is covered and he's knocked out. 
When he wakes up, Thomas finds himself in Rao's van with all the dead pigs. Rao himself is driving and explains that it's thanks to Thomas's investigation that he understood Raya is saving the world and she's the culmination of her own research. He'll be keeping Thomas locked up for a few days so Raya can do her thing. Then Rao promises to let him go. Thomas doesn't accept this plan though and he jumps on Rao to try to make him stop the van. Instead, the vehicle ends up crashing and Thomas gets away. A few moments later at the beach, Raya shows up after time traveling for the first time and Thomas is there waiting for her. He intends to kill her so she can't keep traveling back. That way, the murders won't happen and he won't become this obsessed shell of a person. Raya explains he won't do that because she's known him his entire life. In fact, Thomas was the one that told her to take this job. Then, Raya takes off her bracelet, revealing she's Thomas's granddaughter, explained by the fact Amy married a black man. Thomas puts his gun down and asks Raya to stop him from killing her in the past, but she can't because it's already happened and time traveling is a one-way trip. Then, Raya asks Thomas to go home and spend time with Amy while she finishes her mission. It all started when Raya was 9 and a man detonated a van with explosives that killed 11,000 people. This triggered a series of events that ended in a civil war that killed millions and left the country in ruins. That's why Raya volunteered to go back and shoot all the members of the militia group with the doctor's special poison, which is activated by an old Rao in the future, resetting the whole timeline. In the present, Thomas makes it to the hospital just in time and Holt is glad to see his finally chosen family over work. Thomas gets to hold his newborn Raya for the first time and he puts the bracelet around her tiny wrist. Make sure to subscribe and turn on notifications so you can watch more videos like this. Thanks for watching.